You're listening to the Breakaway Breakdown podcast, where we bring you interviews with some of the top ropers in the country, news about what's going on in the fastest sport on dirt, training tips for you and your horses, and so much more. I'm your host, Casey Allen. Let's jump in. You guys, I cannot wait for you to hear today's special episode. Thanks to the folks at BreakawayRoping.com, we had the chance to go to Larry D. Guy's Arena in Abilene, Texas with five of the top 15 and FBR qualifiers and not only watch them work together to help each other prepare for the national finals of breakaway roping in Las Vegas, but they got together for a roundtable discussion to share what it's like being a professional breakaway roper in the year 2022. We've got cowgirls in their 20s to 50s in this dis- discussion, and I think you're going to love what they have to say. This was completely unscripted. We literally just turned the cameras on and let them talk. And yes, the discussion is also completely unedited. Make sure to check out BreakawayRoping.com to learn from some of these ladies and use code BREAKDOWN15 for 15% off your membership. If you're listening at the time of release, we've got the Preferred Open streaming for free all weekend long on BreakawayRoping.com as a special treat to you guys. And stay tuned to hear what you can expect from our NFBR coverage in Las Vegas. I know, you're tired of hearing me talk, so let's just jump right in. I'm JJ Hampton, and we're here with the Breakaway Roping Journal. And I'm Larry D. Guy. Samantha Fulton. Taylor Munsell. Katie Williams. And we all made the NFRB. <laughs> NFBR. <laughs> NFBR. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We all made the NFBR this year, and we all met at my house here in Abilene, Texas, to discuss kind of how we practice, you know, to get ready for the NFR. And we've had a had a pretty good day. Yeah, it was a good day. I really enjoyed getting to rope with Katie and, and get some advice and some help. I thought it was uh, a good practice that I needed. Yep, it was a great day. Yeah. It was fun getting to rope with you and fun getting to rope here. When you when you practice, you just practice like you do every day, huh? Yes. Nothing special. No, nothing special. I mean, we'll figure out the start, we'll see it, and we'll rope, and I've never, I don't know, I think it's wonderful if you can do that and set up the barrier, and that's what works for you, but I don't, I don't know, it's another day of roping. Yeah, it is our NFBR, but at the end of the day, it's another roping, and I don't think to put too much on myself to do that. Last year for me was, um, it wasn't the finals that I would have dreamed of having, and um, I'm gonna just keep practicing, and hopefully this one's a lot better than last time. But let me tell you something about JJ. She ran nine calves, and how many did you miss out of nine? Seven. That's right. And you know who won the last round? Yeah, I did. You did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I didn't know she won the last round. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, that says a lot because you know, like mentally, there's so many people that that you know, if 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 they were to miss seven calves, you know, out of nine, you know, they'd get themselves down. And and uh, you know, adversity when it when it comes to her, she's always an overcomer, and she's the one that you know won the last round. And that. To me, that says a lot. Well, thank you. It was, uh, I don't know, it wasn't what you wanted to do, and I was like, man, just keep firing it at them because eventually I'm going to catch. And, you know, I didn't let it bother me. And we got home maybe a month later, and Marty says to me, he goes, I, we were talking, he goes, you know most girls would have quit. They'd have hung themselves, cut their ropes up, and been done. I go, what the hell? I mean, what are you talking about? And he's like, JJ, holy moly. And I was like, you know, I guess that's right. So, I, I mean, he was bragging on me in his own way, but it was. I mean, that could have really got me down, but it didn't. How would you handle that? I, that would have been hard for me. Yeah, it was. I, I saw people. They they weren't having as bad a time as I were, but they were whipping their horses, yanking their horses, and I just, I'm just not that one. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I missed 19 in a row, but the 20th one I wanted, and I'm just going to keep doing that. But it was not. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult. I mean, I don't say difficult, but it wasn't something. You I mean I thought I'm better than that? I should, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you, there wasn't any girl. Other than that, before the last two calves, it wasn't rude me on. I, I think they saw how bad it was for me, and they actually felt sorry for me. Because, I mean, they were. People that don't, we don't. I mean, y'all, we all cheer each other on. But they were really like, come on, JJ, you can do this. You know, like, this, it was just, that was cool for me that, I mean, we do have a bunch of good girls that cheer us on. And, and that, that really showed it to me then. Because I was, I was having a trouble. It was a struggle. If I had to bet money on who's going to win the 10th round, I knew who I was betting on. <laughs> That's for too. sure. I did, too. I did, too. What do you think? What do you What have you been working on so far? What are you gonna What are you gonna continue to work on to 
to get uh, ready? For me, it's just been a struggle keeping horses sound. So trying to stay practicing and making realistic runs in the practice pen, not on the horses that I plan on riding out there, which has kind of been my whole summer. So um, I've just been trying to stay in a good headspace and the, more so the neck catch of it, like making good sharp runs on what horses I have instead of trying to make I don't go into the box and think this is going to be the run that runs around. I go and make the best run I can on the calf I have on the horse I'm riding. And then when I get back on my good horses, like I got to get back on my bay today for the first time since JJ's open. It's fun and easy. So, Well, you and Sam hauled together all year. And I mean, y'all kept each other pretty pumped up. I mean, both of y'all had a great year. And how, how, did, how, how was that? How is that being together all the time? <laughs> It's honestly really good. I couldn't ask for a better hauling situation. It's hard being together that long in the summer, but I mean, I rode her horses this summer, and that's part of what helped me make the finals and stuff. And I knew that I could ride her horses. That was the good thing about it, is I knew between her and her family, I was never going to be like horseless or not able to get somewhere or something, which was kind of a struggle for me this summer with horses for sure. Um, but yeah, we kept each other pumped up. When I wasn't winning, she was usually winning, and when she wasn't winning, I was usually winning, and we bought each other dinner. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's good. Great yeah, that's Tell them awesome. about the horses you have because you have great horses. Thank you. Um, right now, I have my good black horse Sambo. Um, he's 17 years old this year. I've had him for eight years. He should have been mine. But go and ahead. Go ahead. With <laughs> that's a sore subject. But uh, I've had him everywhere from the short setups like San Antonio to Salinas, and he's great everywhere. I can always depend on him. I know exactly what he's going to do. Um, I got another one. He's actually my mom's horse. Um, I call him Hank, and I started hauling him. You rode him in California. In California was the yeah. first time I, I took him to uh, Rodeo in Wickenburg, like the week before California. Won that, and then took him out to California and placed all three of them. And he's he was a little green this summer, kind of fell apart at certain times. But in July, he really came through with, for me. And I won the most money on, on him as I did any of my horses this year. So he's and he's just in the last month he's really started coming out strong. And I'm I'm not sure which one I'm gonna ride first out there yet, but he's definitely pretty. It's a hard choice between the two of them. And then you had another one out there that Munsell rode some. Your sister rode some. Uh, Tick, yes, I have had him for about a year and a half. Um, that horse is great. Everybody, or there's been multiple people that have jumped on him and won money. I've won a bunch on him. He's really fast, tries hard every time. He's just a winner. Yeah, great horse. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Katie? You, she, you was a sleeper this year. She <laughs> she went to Montana. That's where you're originally from, and you yep. live in Texas now. And yep. Man, you're I just... Like, I like Montana in the summer. I go up there every summer. Yeah. Um, I had to pick and choose a little bit where I had to go. Um, uh, this summer I didn't go very hard because I have one horse. Uh, one good horse that I can, you know, count on winning on. So I try to take it pretty easy on her during the summer. Um, I she had a to. young horse? She is. She's only seven. So she's still, she's, this year she was a lot more solid. Um, and she was awesome this year. But I still, I didn't want to haul her too much, put her in um, a ton of pressure, pressure situations, you know. So I stayed a lot in Montana this year. I headed a bunch um, in the circuit rodeos there and breakaway in the circuit rodeos there. Breakaway on a young one a little bit. So I took it a little bit easy, um, kind of towards the end of the year, but I'm glad it all worked out because the girls at the end were winning everything. Yes. The girls, you know, from, I don't even know, 10th to 20th, it's, it's towards the end of the year. Everyone. I started getting a little nervous. I was like, whoo, like, I should, I should have been going a little more, but it was good. I'm glad it worked out. No, what? it was tough. I mean, it, it, it was, was tough. Because the yeah. summer for me was terrible. Like, I... I literally came home and won a thousand dollars at Mesquite, and then at the end I started winning just a little. But I had a really rough summer, and I was—I mean, like we all thought Kelsey would be in. Yeah. And I was trying to get ahead of Kelsey. Everyone, yeah. But then I had went, then I had to win ten more thousand. I don't know. I mean, crazy. it was crazy, but it was that just those girls how good at the end. Did. It was because there were some girls that were in the top fifteen with less than a month left that ended up being below 20th yeah. they did yeah. and it, it didn't tough. even didn't even like not win money they were winning money still they just weren't winning enough, enough. money i know because yeah. people so hit tough. big rodeos and did awesome and you had a great summer yeah. i did i i was i was very fortunate i i wanted to i hurt my shoulder like during california and i was kind of wanting to come home and i was the same way i thought kelsey had it made and i thought as soon as i win you know mm -hmm. right ahead of kelsey then i'm gonna go home get my shoulder operate on and be ready for the nfr and 
Man, I'm glad I didn't. No, because that was not enough. No, it wasn't yeah. enough, and that was uh, it was good. I mean, the more rodeos that had breakaway for us with more money that people could win was pretty. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, they added a lot more rodeos this year. We had a lot more opportunities. It was steady throughout the year. Like yeah. all year, you could win a bunch of money. Yeah. You know, in the last couple of years, it seems like we've had to pass up great rodeos that, that, that everyone else got to go to to get to one. And this year, you know, we, we, it seemed like we got to go to a lot more along the way. It made it a lot feasible for us, even though the, the gas was yeah, $6 me, or $7 I, a gallon. Last summer, I flew home a lot. I yeah. I flew home every chance I'd get to be with Kaysen, and this summer, I didn't get to fly home very much. Yeah. And there was a whole month I didn't even get to see him. Yeah, there was a yeah. bunch of rodeos this summer. Mm-hmm. That's and good. the rodeos in Montana, we, we left and went to a bunch up there. Um, you stay up there most of the summer. Yeah, I didn't. I don't hardly leave. I stay up there, circuit rodeo up there. Um, I stay with Ty and Sierra Erickson. Yeah. And that's where I like to be. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, I love it up and there. And the rodeos are really good up there. No, they are. They are, yeah. That's good. Cattle are good. Yeah. yeah. What, Sam, where, go ahead. I was going to say, Sam, how are you going to get ready for the for? Um... Kind of sounds like you like try to keep it keep things the same and just do things correctly and like make each run very intentional in the practice bin. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like try to we'll probably set up the box and stuff like that and try to go at some, but yeah, just trying to be really intentional with my practice more so, not just getting ready for the NFR, but just going for you know just practicing for anything, getting better as a roper. Right, that's good. I learned from today that I'm gonna have either I'm going to somebody's house or they're gonna come to mine. I always have calves. I rope by myself a lot mm -hmm. um, and Kate, with Kaysen, and Marty will come over too, but I really rope by myself a lot. I don't rope with people, and I think I'm going to do that a little bit more. Just, I am. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff because I don't, I think it'll help me. Oh, I know it does, and I said I'm, I'm fortunate. I get to rope with Hope, you know, Thompson every day, and, you know, it's, it's like you always say that, you're, you know, the best coach is yourself, but then when you have somebody that can hold you accountable, you know, for your for your actions or the things that you're doing. Like, there's a lot of times that I, I'll make a run and I, I don't really know what I did, but I can come back and, you know, say, what'd you see? And, you know, having someone that can give you that information, man, it really, really helps. And like I, like I said, this year I got hurt, so I'm a roper, you know that. I've roped, that's all I've done my whole entire life is just rope, and I rope 100, of something a day, whether I had them hill them or rope calves, and since I've gotten hurt, I probably haven't run 20 practice calves since April. Right. You know, and that's that's hard on me because I'm a roper. But sure. you know, just you know, going through the actions, you know, just going through the motions, and like I, you know, like the scoring, running the calves. You know, you don't even have to have a rope, but just like hitting the start, getting my horse crossed over, getting right. him to the spot, and then acting like I'm roping. And that's that's helped me. You know, that's helped me a lot to stay as sharp as I have, you know, this summer because yeah, I wasn't able to good. rope. Yeah. See, for me, I've already had the shoulder reconstructive surgery and all that, so I can't can't run very many calves, and my practices are very limited. So it's very much like, for me, getting ready for the finals, it's like I pick out a day, and it's like I'm going to go out and to win the rounds on this day. So I'm going to run 10, and I'm going to try to win all 10 rounds. And that's where I try to see a start, hit it, and get it out of my hand to win the round, as if I'm out of the average and I'm only going at the round. And then the next day I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to be like, I'm going to run 10 calves today for the average. So it's like where I see what I think I need to see on the calf to be smart but not off the barrier, and then go make the best run, I, smart run I can, not just forcing it. And then the next day it's going to be like, this is what I need to work on on this horse. This is what I need to work on on this horse. And then another day of just making sure I'm just roping sharp and like I have to pick each day what I'm going to work on because I can't run I can't run like 10 calves is even maxing out of practice for me usually if I'm roping every day of the week that's a great way to practice yeah so it's I like that for especially for the NFR because it's 10 runs like I do like to do a few days of where it's like that for sure like I'm going out the round all 10 runs this day so I don't get into the mindset of like oh I broke the barrier on that one and then get to fight in my head and stuff trying to do win the rounds and think about average and all that other stuff it's like this is what i'm focused on today if i think i broke out on that one well it's a good thing i was going for the round because it's what i'm doing on the next one too and just try to learn from what i'm working on that day and then change it the next day well you know and the way ours is set up is um five one day five the next so like how do you how do you think about that you kind of you get in jackpot mode do you try to stay in round mode how do you think you're going to approach that i 
I I do better. I wrote better when I slow my mind down. So if I'm in more, if I'm in more almost jackpot mode, I ride my horse better, and therefore I feel like I win more because I'm I slow my mind down. I get to go in too fast, throwing too fast, get too strung out if I'm thinking going fast. That's just kind of me personally. So if I keep keep my posture, keep riding my horse good, I'm way more successful. Um, you know, speed kind of comes with with it. If you make if you knock a good start and you are making a good run and you have a good run set up, speed will you'll be fast. Um, but for me, I have to work on riding, keeping my feet where I need to keep my feet, and then I rope better, my horse works better, my horse stays working longer. I'd run 10 calves over two days, your horse is going to need to stay working. So, so you'll approach it like a five head I will each day? Probably, yeah. I feel like it's more successful for me when I just kind of slow everything down. I feel like I can still be fast when I do slow everything down, but I'm more successful or have been in the past when I slow it down, approach it more like a jackpot, and my horse stays working better. But question, you aren't going to, like, let off at all, though. Like, you're not going to try no, to miss the bear no. or anything and go just catch no. fire. It's going to be. That's what I'm saying. That's what I know what she's saying, and I know just from watching her. But to clarify, like, you're not going to just be like, I'm going to make sure I get out and then run up in the middle, take an extra swing and rope them. You're still going to be making realistic, really good runs. You're not just going to be Absolutely. almost trying to break the barrier. Yes. You're going to yes. be still making. When I try to go fast, it's a disaster. So I know that about myself. So I try to slow Her slow is still faster than my fast. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Sam? I feel like similar to Katie. Like when That's what I was saying, like doing things intentionally and correct. Like when I do it correct, when I leave the box correct, that's when I set my whole run up good. Whether it's going to come together fast or take another swing, whatever it is, like that's when it's the best for me. I think it's the best for anybody. We, we talked about that. When you, when you score well, leave the box well, mm -hmm. Roping's then pretty it's easy. easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, roping's easy. Yeah. And I think that's probably all of our, you know, our goal is that, you know, if we can score, you know, score good and run them across there good, then mm -hmm. it gets a lot easier. We all know how to be pretty fast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> our sport is fast. I was talking to an older gentleman today at, a, at, at the roping at San Angelo, and he was talking about how many mistakes these girls are making. And I said, you rope against the 100 best girls in the world and see how many mistakes you make. Because I said, everybody goes pretty dang fast. You're lucky you know? if there's yeah. only 100 in it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> you guys, the entire Breakaway Roping Journal team is going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada next week at the South Point Arena and Hotel, coming to you live from the national finals of Breakaway Roping. From the girls getting their back numbers, to who wins each round, to the average winner, to the world champion, you will not miss one single moment. We are going to be spotlighting 2022 Resist All Rookie of the Year, Josie Connor. We are going to be talking about the horsepower that these girls are bringing and bringing you coverage on breakaway roping like you have not seen in the past. I cannot wait to meet some of you in person at the South Point. If you haven't got your tickets yet, we've got links for that on BreakawayRopingJournal.com. So make sure that you are staying tuned to the Breakaway Breakdown and the Breakaway Roping Journal on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram so that you do not miss a moment of Breakaway in Vegas. We're also going to be making sure that we keep an eye on all the jackpots that are happening across Las Vegas while we are out there because we want to make sure you guys are in the loop on breakaway roping. If you're still interested in checking out breakawayroping.com to learn from some of the amazing ladies in the top 15, make sure to use code BREAKDOWN15 to get 15% off your membership. All right, now let's get back to the ladies in the round table discussion. Exactly. It's usually 200. Yeah. When you yeah. have to go at them. If you don't, you're not going to win nothing anyways. No, I mean, you, 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 you got to go with everyone. You, you want to do the best you can, and maybe you don't. But if you don't, you can't hang your hat for trying it because the next girl right behind you is going to score good and get it on. I would say yeah. four flat ones about the same as no time does it's, anymore. It. So. so it doesn't matter. What do you think? Yeah. Um, you and I are the old ones of the group. And um, tell me what you think and, like, what you see, how, like, how far it's come, maybe what you see in the future, like, of breakaway roping. Man, it, it's. It's crazy how far it's come because I've been a, a rodeo warrior for forever. I mean, I've been doing it. You didn't even rodeo back when I did. You were doing something different. I've been rodeoing a long time to to see this come come to 
fruition is pretty, it's incredible, honestly. I mean, we'd go to rodeos and pray there was nine people there because it paid the best. I mean, and I was driving to Louisiana every weekend. Yeah. I mean, I've been, anyways, it's just, it's really, I don't know, it's cool to be a part of this just for the fact of how much it's grown, how many people are into it, how much talent there is mm-hmm. with these girls, how good a horse women they are, how good a horses they ride. I mean, it has just come so far that it is, uh, it's quite a journey, and I, I I'm just glad to be, I mean, I, I, we can still do this. I mean, that we I still have a chance to be able to compete with you ladies because y'all are a bunch of badasses. And, That's you know, right. and if we can, I, I don't know, I, I just praise God every day for the, this opportunity that we have. I'm thankful that y'all are going to get to do it. And then we'll last a little while longer, I'm sure, but that y'all get to carry this on that and, and keep building what all the people before us and, and we've done. Uh, it's incredible. Um, I, I just would like more money. I yep. think it's that's the kicker for us is the money. I mean, we rodeos harder than grown men, and we did. Not all, everybody, but most of us did, and it it cost a lot to do this. Um, and I think that's we've earned it. Yeah, we deserve it. I don't think I'm acting like prima donna because I'm not because I put my time in. But it's it's time that we get to do this. I mean, and I don't even Thomas and Max great, but I think it's the money. Yeah. I mean, we're roping for five thousand around, and they're roping for thirty. It's yeah. time. And we've shown up at numbers. We show up. We buy things we're with our families. We spend money. I mean, we're there, and and we've proven we're capable. We we're honorable, and uh, we deserve to be there. So I, I just I think it's coming, but I would like to see it faster than maybe it's gonna. Yeah, and we're coming from all over. I mean, Montana, Oklahoma, North and South Dakota. Yeah, she's been both, and then I mean, it's it's we're coming from all over That's right. in numbers. You know, yes. and I think that. It's uh, it's been really cool and amazing for me to see how far it's grown and how what JJ and I started rodeo when we were about nine years old together and we're 51 still rodeoing together so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of cool and it's great to see like you said the talent like when I watch these girls rope I mean Sam's been standing here with me and roping and I watch her rope and I just my head I just shake my head thinking man I wish I could do what these girls can do these days you no, know I know they're awesome yeah. They're, the talent's unreal. What do y'all think about like how far it's come? Like just starting with you, like like seeing where even in the last say ten years that you've been. How long ago you were in college? Oh gosh, do I have to answer that? I know. <laughs> I feel old now. Um, I graduated 2014. Okay, so from there to right now, how far has it come? Oh, it's crazy. I completely quit breakwaying for three years after college because it just wasn't. The money wasn't there, you know, like you, you, you had the UPRI rodeos and I had the, the, the northern rodeos in, the, in Montana, but I was more focused on my heading and the World Series ropes and stuff because there just wasn't a great end result in the breakaway, you know, and it wasn't, it's crazy how far it's come. Like we were talking about, you know, the girls that won money at the, the end this year, just every, every piece of it, the horses these girls are riding the awesome rodeos we're getting to go to um all of it is just awesome like i never would have thought we would have equal money you know at fort worth like we did and stuff three years ago and it was just such a cool feeling fort worth was one of the big first big ones i got to go to and it was so cool um it's getting so tough it's every rodeo the ads break way we're so excited and so thankful for um we're so thankful for everything you guys have done to get it to this point as well. Um, it grows like crazy every year. The numbers grow. The horses get better. The girls get better. Everything just gets bigger and better every year, and it's really fun to see. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Monster? Well, I kind of come into it late because I team roped before I breakaway roped, and I was just kind of breakaway roped because it was just handy enough with the rope to breakaway rope. So I didn't breakaway rope until after my shoulder surgery when I went to college. And then I kind of hit it perfect. I started that bay horse when I went to college, and then I think I won the BFI in 2018, and that was like the first year I started breakaway roping, and then I think 2020 they had an NFR or NFBR. So it was, and I went to enough rodeos that year, I think I was like 22nd, and the next year I was like, hey, I get a rodeo. So I really kind of come into it and got really into the breakaway and hit it hard when the ropings started adding a lot of money. And then the ropings were getting bigger, and I was like, heck, I can do this. It's easier on my shoulder. And then... um, that bay horse ended up being good, so I kept going, and then it, we got to start rodeo on. And it's crazy how fast it grew because the first year there was only – I only went to the rodeos that made sense to go to, really. And it was like 
what Fort Worth and the Fourth of July run and right. stuff. And then the next year was like there was a bunch of them. I mean, we got a rodeo all summer. I didn't even start till the summer and still got to go to a bunch of really good rodeos. And then this year we got a rodeo all year long. Yeah. And you still can be rodeo, and if you wanted to be, I mean, it never really was a break. You could rodeo all Sorry. year, almost every weekend, all year. Yeah. And that's, I think it's awesome. I appreciate all the rodeos adding it and the ones that are trying to get better and the ones that are already, you know, 100% in for us. Yeah. For sure. Um, I've had so much fun rodeo, and, like, it's been a literal dream. Like, when I was 18, I bought my car, my WPRI card, and barrel raced and went around the circuit rodeos, made circuit finals there because I thought that was kind of what I was going to have, you know, to make the finals or whatever, or to even just pro rodeo, that's what was going to have to happen. And then they started adding some breakaways in some of the pro rodeos up there, and everybody was just ecstatic. And I still remember I was in Baker at the rodeo, and they called us and told us that they were going to be able to have the circuit finals in Minot with the Badlands, with the rest of the rodeo. And they were going to put us after the bull riding, but we were all just so excited that we even got to be there. And... I've enjoyed rodeoing so much and the fact that we get to go to like these iconic rodeos and see the arenas and the, everything and like learn it's been so much fun. No, it is. It's 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 been a dream come true because I got to watch my brother rodeo and got to, you know, he made the NFR and the Kefir Open in 93 and got to do you know all that, and never did I ever dream that got I was to hear gonna. About it. Yeah, yeah. I never got to. I never dreamed that I would get to go to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and and rope and Salinas, and you know Fort Worth and San Antonio, Houston. You know, yeah. like the, and I mean all the, and, it, and it's not even just the big rodeos; it's the little rodeos too. Like some of the arenas that we get to rope in and and be up. And the people you, know, you get to meet. And the people you get to meet Committees along the way. I think it's crazy when you think about that we're like literally the first. Like, for the guys, there's always, for every guy that's rodeo now, they get to talk to somebody else that had went to that rodeo before them and knew kind of the setup and stuff. And for us, we're literally all the first. And I know that we can talk to the calf ropers, but a lot of times our barriers aren't the same. Our calves are never the same. Like, it's completely for everybody. It's like walking into a level playing field on these arenas no, and setups and everything. And it's crazy to think that in the future, I'll have went to some of these rodeos 20 times and yeah. still be going. Like, yeah. it's crazy. What I think is cool from us being older and you people know you they they knew my name they didn't know me they see her clinics and all that but people know who I am now and they will literally see me in town and follow me places I had a little, little man stop me and say are, are you who I think you are I said yes sir can I please buy your lunch sure I mean sitting had a conversation with me, but the people now that know who I am and when I go places like four or five people caught me in the bathroom today and were like, you don't know me, but I watch you on TV. And it's really kind of cool. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. For us to get the recognition that we've wrote for so long and the people that know and come and talk to me just because now they see me on TV, or it, it's pretty cool to me because I love people. I, I do. I talk to the people who take my ropes off. I just, I mean, I love people. And for them to be able to, they know me. And they've seen me on TV, and they do. They, they've gotten to know me. And I think, I think that's cool. Well, I was in Hayes, Kansas, doing a clinic this past week, and um, in the hotel, I get off the elevator, and this lady points at me, and she's like, are you, who are you? And I said, Larry D. Guy, and she said, I knew it was you. She said, I watch you on TV. She said, my favorite breakaway roper is J.J. Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine too. <laughs> you get that a lot. You get that a lot. <laughs> we, we were shy, I know, at, uh, I was at Pillows at the store buying stuff. And this lady talking to me, and she goes, Lady? And the lady's holding this up. I go, No, I'm not Lady. I got my purple hat on, you know. And the lady walks off, and she goes, What, what is that lady? It's your JJ with the purple hat. <laughs> and, uh, I got the, it was the funniest thing because she thought I was Lady. It was me and that little lady. But, you know, it, it just kind of is funny that people, they now know us all. And that's I think that's cool because they actually get to know us and not just mm -hmm. think it's something else. And people love us, they love our event. And I, I've, I've enjoyed that a lot. I really have people get to see us. Well, and that, it gives women another event in pro rodeo. I mean, we, we have one out of the really seven, I mean, six major events. I mean, they, they have steer roping as well. But, I mean, we got one event, and that's barrel race. Well, now when you add breakaway, that gives women two events. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it gives, you know, the, the people out there an opportunity to be fans yes. of another women's event, uh, you know. Yes. And people love the breakaway. I love the breakaway. I'm, I mean, I'm a huge barrel racing fan. That's my favorite event. I mean, I love watching the barrel race. And, but I'm a, you know, I'm a roper. And I said, it's really cool, like what JJ's saying. I mean, they, they know us. 
like you, they, they know you. And I mean, I, I know y'all run into the same thing. You know, you go to some place, they're going to know you. And it's just cool that they, you know, the Cowboy Channel's helped that out a lot. They have. Breakaway Journal, like putting stuff out there on social media for us and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's really helped out a it, lot. It is, and I think it's cool that they do get to know us. I mean, it is. So probably if, when I invite myself over to rope with one of y'all or whenever. Can I come to your do, house? You can. That's it. Come on, I've I'll been rope. waiting to ask. No, well, come on, we'll rope, and I'm going to interview you too because I think it's important um, for us to be able to get some stuff out about our, uh, everybody else because there's things that they don't know about you that they should know about you, and I think it's cool if we get to this. So if you come over, we're going to have a little we'll have a little chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It would be like a dream come true to get a rope with another one of my heroes. Yeah. Come on, we'll be around this week. We'll go. I told you if you got us started, we wouldn't <laughs> stop. That was really good, good y'all. Good job. It was good. Good job. Good job. Really good. That's it. Really good. I knew it wouldn't be hard once they started talking. No, we got it. <laughs>